In this introduction chapter, we're going to start off explaining the Rhino interface. How is it organized? What is every feature? And what is it used for? Next, we'll talk about Rhino commands, their function, and how to execute them. When you open Rhino, you will first see a welcome screen while Rhino is loading. This screen contains some nice features that I will explain briefly. It has three tabs, New, Recent, and Open. If you click on New, you will see a list of default templates provided by Rhino. The templates are organized by the approximate size of your project. The small object templates are usually used for object design, like jewelry or office objects. Large object templates are used for bigger projects, like buildings or ship halls. As later on, we're going to focus on the field of architecture, we'll choose a large object template. They're also divided between metric and imperial units. Personally, I'm used to the metric system, so I'm starting with the large object meters template. If you click on the Recent tab, you will see a list of recently opened models. This is a nice feature and allows you to quickly continue a model at the point where you left off the other day. The final tab is open. When clicked here, you will get the familiar file explorer window, from window where you can specifically search a Rhino file. The extension for a Rhino file is .3dm. On the side are some useful links related to the Rhino subjects. In news, workshops are announced, new plugins are introduced, and general Rhino news is displayed. Below news are some useful tips relating to the Rhino software. It's worthwhile to check the links out and always stay updated. Rhino has a basic layout, like most software, and we're going to explain the different elements and their functions here. Rhino is a command-driven program, which means that all the actions you will perform are command-based. Commands are accessed through the menus, or, to, or the toolbars, or by typing the command name. In the next sections, you will explore using these methods. You may find one method easier than another. Personally, I prefer to type the command name, as it usually is the most fast, but the choice is yours. The menu groups the Rhino commands per function and is the first way to initiate a Rhino command. Here you can find almost all the Rhino commands to start with. Under File, which many of you are familiar with, you have Open, New and Save To and under Open. Start, start a new or save a Rhino document. Under Edit, you will find the most common command for editing geometry, like Copy, Cut, Paste, but also Join, Explode, Trim, etc. More on those later on. Under View, are options related to the different viewports, and under Curve, Surface, Solid, and Mesh are commands related to that specific type of geometry. Dimensions has all the commands for annotations, like leaders, dimensions, te and text dots. Under Transform, we have all the transformation tools, like Move, Rotate, Scale, etc. Commands that will transform your geometry in any way. And under Tools are some extra features related to Rhino, like the scripting part of Rhino and the extended option menu at the bottom. At the option menu, you can adjust and customize almost every little thing in Rhino, like the grid size, colors of the different functions, your language, units, etc. Under Analyze, we have tools that will help you analyze your geometry, for instance, curvature or surface continuity. Under Render, we find all the options to set, set up and render your scene. A render is a computer-generated image of your 3D or 2D model. Next up, we have Panels. Here we find a different tab we can switch off and on for quick access. I personally have the Properties panel, the Layers panel, the Display panel, and the Help panel open. Last, we have the Help menu. Here you can search with keywords a topic, and it will provide you with examples and solutions. The History window is an important feature of Rhino. It will display the past commands entered by you and gives you additional information about if a command was successful or why it failed. Like I mentioned before, Rhino commands are the thing that drives Rhino. Besides the menu, the second method to init initiate a command is through the command prompt. If you type in a command, like line, you will see that there is an autocomplete, so you don't have to memorize the exact commands by head. You will see that the more you will use Rhino, you will switch from pressing buttons on the toolbar to typing the commands in the command prompt. Toolbars are the third and last way to initiate a command. They are a visual representation of most of the commands from the menu. They are ordered per topic, and most buttons have two commands. One that will initiate with the left mouse click, and another with the right mouse click. Hover over a button to see the tooltip with, with the both commands. Viewports display the Rhino working environment. The default, when you open Rhino, will be perspective view, the top view, the right view, and the front view. 
You can maximize a viewport by double clicking on the name. If you want to minimize, simply double click again on the name and it will go back to your four views. The arrow next to the viewport's name will open up a menu with extra options related to views. Later we'll talk a little bit more about this. Panels are handy quick access tabs that can contain properties, layers, display, help and others. Personally I use properties and layers a lot, so it's easy to dock them on the side. If your screen is of a small size, you might prefer to maximize your viewports as much as possible. You can drag out the panels and simply hide them by clicking the X. To show them again, simply go to Panels Properties to show them again. What I would advise you though, is to reduce the size of the panels rather than closing them, as you're going to use them a lot. You can reduce the size of the panels by simply hovering over the edge of the panel until the drag icon appears, and then dragging it to the appropriate size. 